So far in Java, we've seen the basic arithmetic operators, addition, subtraction, division, multiplication, and modulus. What if we were looking to do something a little bit more advanced? What if we wanted to find the square root of a number or deal with an irrational exponent? Well, it turns out, like we saw with strings, there's been a class created for us. It's called the math class. And uh, just like the string class, this is a final class. We'll learn more about the meaning of that in a later lesson. But uh, for now, just understand that there is a, a math class created. Um, you can see right here, actually, it's got a couple of final doubles available to it. So if you ever wanted to use the natural base e, or if you wanted to use the number pi, um, this is not an exact value since e and pi are irrational values, but this is a very close approximation that you could use, and I'll show you how. Uh, and if we want, we can search Google for the Java math class and we'll see a nice summary of all of the methods available to the math class. Okay, there's an absolute value method, there's um, logarithms, there's the square root function, which is the one I mentioned earlier. Okay, so let's see how the square root function works. That's the method signature. Okay, so the square root function to be used requires you to provide a number. Now, what's interesting is it says double, but remember, you're always allowed to put an integer into a double. Can't do the reverse. Can't put a double in an int, but you can put an int in for a double. The other thing that's new for today is it, over here it says the word static. Now right here when it says double, that's the return type of the method. That means that your answer will always be in the form double. And we'll see that it will form a double even if you don't need it to. But what the word static means is that the way we call this method is a little different. You might remember methods in the string class were called by prefixing with a string. Methods in the math class are different. Because of the word static, we're going to prefix these methods with the word math. Okay, so this method returns a double, this square root method. And this is what I mean about the word static. When you're calling a static method, what you do is you go to the name of the class. Now, the name of this class is actually math. The authors of this class called it public class math with a capital M. So if you want to use any of the methods from the math class, such as the square root method, okay, then you will say math dot square root. At that point, you can call the square root method. And again, it's because they put that word static right there. So the context that you call this method from is a little bit different. So math dot square root sqrt, and then we give whatever number we want. Now, like I said, we could actually put an integer in here, okay? Such as 16. I know the square root of 16 is 4, so I'm expecting to get back 4. One thing we'll notice: this number will print as 4.0, and I'll show you. It's not actually because I stored it into a double. It would actually always print 4.0 because this method is guaranteed to return a type double. Okay, so what I'm saying is, is even if we took this print statement and we arranged it so that the square root went directly into the print statement, okay? So it really doesn't matter that I stored it into a double. If I put that square root directly into there, it would still print 4.0 because this method is guaranteed to return a type double. Now. If you tried to make this an integer, okay, even though this is, again, this is that kind of thing where, like, even though uh, you could think to yourself, well, wait, you know, 16 square root 4, I don't really need to put it in a double. The, comp the compiler doesn't care about things like that, okay? The square root function was designed to return a double. Therefore, it's going to return a double, and you can only store it into a double unless you were to typecast. So how could we typecast here? Well, for instance, let's say I wanted to know something about like the square root of 26. Well, I know that the square root of 26 is pretty close to 5. Okay, I know that 25 square root is 5. So the square root of 26 should be 5 point something. So if I were to say math.sqrt and put 26, as long as I typecast it back to an integer, well, this should be fine. Let's see if this works. Okay, first thing allows me to compile. That's always the first question. Now, do we get any type of runtime error? Nope. 
prints five, just like I expected. So even though I didn't know the square root of 26 off the top of my head, I knew it would be really close to five. Okay, so this is just a basic intro on how to use the math methods. Again, this is all coming from the math class, and these methods are static. So we actually call them through the name of the class that they exist in. So we don't apply them to a string, we don't apply them to a double or an int. We just actually call the method directly from the math class and then we provide whatever the required parameter is. In this case, we were using square root. We were required to give a double. 